It's time to now use that scale operation to make up for OpenGL squishing our shape. Let me just show you the problem again. Notice we have this nice fat triangle and it gets fatter as I stretch the window this way and even get down. It's nice and wide. doesn't look natural at all. Let's use scale to make up for what OpenGL is doing. We need to squish our shape. So we have translator, we have rotator. All right, this should be old hat from previous videos. We use them to uh, combine them into a single matrix, then use them to transform each one of the verts. So let's do scale in here. I'm going to say matrix 2D H, and I'll call it scale. I'd, I'd call it scalar to be in line with these two, but scalar is actually a mathematical term that I don't want to get messed up. So let's do scalar, and I'll say matrix 2D H uh, scale. And then what should we scale by? All right, we need to scale by the aspect ratio. Remember in the previous video I said the aspect ratio is the ratio of the width to the height. And generally our width is greater than our height, so our aspect ratio generally is greater than one, but could certainly go less than one. Let me take that off there. Let's, let's get our aspect ratio. Float aspect ratio gets the width divided by the height. There is our ratio right here. The division is the ratio. Width is a Q OpenGL widget. It's in the Q widget class. Returns an int. So if this returns 50 and this returns 100, 50 divided by 100 in integer land is a zero. So let's tell the compiler, hey, please emit code to convert that to a float. All right. And there's a difference between a cast and a conversion. You may want to go watch my videos on differences between cast versus conversion. This performs a conversion. So this will return a float, and the compiler will say, oh, well, this needs to be a float in order to do a division. So the whole thing turns into a float, which then I assign to a float. And I don't lose any information by dividing 50 by 100 and such like that. So watch what I'm going to do. We, if, the, if OpenGL fattens my image, oh, wow, that's a straight line. Okay, say our width is greater than our height, which it usually is. OpenGL is going to stretch that image out this direction. Okay, so what I want to do is the opposite of that. I want to squish it in. I want to bring it in so that when OpenGL stretches it out, then it'll go back to being normal. So the way we're going to do that is, well, it's going to be with the scale function, actually. Scale, and I'm going to scale by 1 divided by the aspect ratio. And then I don't want to collapse the y. I just want to leave the y alone. So if I scale by 1, anything times 1 is the original thing. So why am I doing 1 divided by the aspect ratio? Remember, the aspect ratio is the width divided by the height. We did that right here. And if I, if I take 1 divided by the aspect ratio, that's actually going to give me height divided by width. And I want to know how much is this width going to stretch out so I do the division into the height, and that's going to give me how much I need to rebound. Like so. Now you may think, Jamie, why don't you do height here and width here? Width here, so you can avoid this division. And I'll tell you why. Because aspect ratio is width over height, and I'm trying to be consistent there. Also, very quickly we'll see that um, there's some cases where I need to actually not use this. But let, let's use the scale here. First of all, I'm not going to apply the scale quite yet. Let me uh, run the program again. Get our ship. Let's bring this in nice and short, and then turn the ship just a little bit. Again, remember, OpenGL is stretching the image after the fact, so it always stretches on the X. All right, it's not taking our ship and stretching it to the ship. It's stre well, that's dark. It's stretching it on the X. So we always want to apply our scale after the rotation. All right, and we'll just remember that this matrix will hit our vertice first. Let me let me just draw a vertex out here. Say I had a vertex that was one, zero, one, like so. And when we multiply these two, like these two combined against this vertex, the first thing that will hit it is the rotator, and then the translator. Okay. Well, we want to scale after the rotation hits it. So. What I need to do is put the scale right here. And I definitely want to do it before I do any translation for sure. Uh, leave it to you as an exercise to mess around with that. Let's uh, let's run this, see what happens. Build starter, build succeeded. Hey, our ship's looking 
normal again. Let me rotate the ship. It rotates a lot cleaner now. And I can fly to the edge of the screen. No problems. Okay, feeling pretty good about that scale trick we did. Now, now for another test. Let's change our aspect ratio so it's no longer greater than one. Let's make it less than one. Okay, notice the ship is growing already. And let me turn that and I mean, it still looks good, but our ship got a lot bigger. Okay. And you can think of this. When I watch videos on, I don't know, my TV or my iPad, and I say, hey, go full screen, it says, oh, it's, you know, you, know, you can watch the big widescreen movie, or you can go full screen. And all, all that going full screen does is it chops off the right and the left hand edges of the movie so that you're kind of zoomed in on the center of the movie. But it makes you feel good because it's taking up every single pixel on your iPad or on your TV and it makes you feel like you didn't waste any money on those pixels. So we, we can kind of make up for that. Let me let me do this. I'm going to make our scale there and I'm going to say, hey, if the aspect ratio is greater than 1, then yeah, let, let's roll with this 1 divided by the aspect ratio. Else, scale Get some matrix, 2D, H, scale. Uh, let's keep the X as it is, but then let's scale by the aspect ratio. Okay, remember that's width divided by height. Same reasons why we did this here, but now we want to divide by the height. We want to keep the height. Uh, we want to squish by the height. That's what we're doing there. Let me control a 5 this. Run this, and you'll see there's our ship looking good. Go to the edge of the screen. Looking good. Start it over again. Let's stretch this. Oops. Stretch this up vertically. You can see the ship didn't didn't grow that time. It's kind of like we zoomed in vertically and started horizontally. And we can go to the edge of the screen. Oh, it's feeling good. Feeling good. Now let me show you a little bit of a phenomena, phenomenon here. Let me, uh, I'm going to bring this in. And there comes a point where we hit the square spot. You see how the window looks kind of square. And then... It shrinks the ship down. Okay, same thing on the vertical. Alright, the vertical, I bring it down. Well, let's get, there's a squarish looking vertical. And I bring it down and the ship shrinks like that. Again, it's, it's, it's that behavior you've seen when you zoom in and zoom out on a movie. At some point it's like, well, how much of the movie do you want to keep? And it would help if we had something else besides the ship here, you would see the effect. But I'm actually quite happy about this. And now, what I can do in the next videos is show you how to bounce the ship off the walls or make it wrap around the walls, that kind of thing. So we'll do that uh, in the upcoming videos.